Welcome to this edition of Rattling Bars. I'm Master Moose, the co-host with Eddie Conway. Eddie Conway is doing good. Eddie Conway's health has been proven. And hopefully at some point in time, Eddie Conway will make a cameo appearance at the program that he started and the network that he loved. Alabama prison system is on strike. Now, I'm going to list a few things that encapsulate why they would be on strike. The failure of the Alabama correction system to protect inmates from violence and sexual abuse. The failure to protect them from excessive force by staff. And the failure to provide safe conditions of confinement, alleging the violation of the Eighth Amendment right. Now, this would be some of the issues that anyone would say that the entire prison system is on strike about and that these would be the things that they would be alleging. But what I just listed is what the Department of Justice is alleging in a suit they filed against the Alabama Correction uh, Institutions in 2020. Here to talk about what's going on in the heart of the South and the prison industrial complex in the heart of the South is Mike Sarnado. Michael, introduce yourself to the Rattling the Bars viewers, and you were no stranger to it, but go ahead and introduce yourself again, please. Well, uh, my name is uh, Michael Sarnado. I'm a reporter for the, the Guardian and the, the Real News Network. Uh, I cover mostly labor issues, but I cover you know prison labor issues uh, as well, and I reside in Gainesville, Florida. All right, now let's Mac, let's just go right into the uh, the issue. What's the update on the prison strike, statewide prison strike, mind you, in the state of Alabama? What's the current? What's the what's the update on it before we go into the the details of the why? If 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 there's any update to be offered. So the the strike started yesterday, and. Uh, the Alabama Department of Corrections, you know, admitted all major prisons uh, have experienced uh, varying degrees of, of workers on strike. So uh, the, the jobs that are on strike are prisoners who have to work in, in food prep and the kitchen services and that the maintenance and cleaning services. Uh, and, you know, you mentioned a, a couple of the, the issues behind the strike. Um, the Department of Justice a few years ago ruled that the Alabama prison system is violating the Constitution, uh, violating human rights because uh, of the, the poor conditions. And just a couple of years ago, you know, they filed a lawsuit because the state of Alabama hasn't corrected or, or fixed anything. Uh, and they, they still have it. It's, you know, four years since that issue was first brought up by the Department of Justice. And um, the only thing that Alabama has done is started to construct new prisons, but those won't even be open to, for another three or four years. So um, I think one of the biggest issue behind the strikes is that paroles um, just aren't being granted at all. Um, the you know the couple of the organizations behind this strike have noted that 97 percent of parolees have been denied parole. So it, it seems that uh, parole boards are just outright denying uh, parole for those in prison uh, for you know cases that you know shouldn't be. Um, you know, denied at all. Uh, and that comes into play. Uh, Alabama has some really harsh sentencing laws. Um, you know, they have like a 30 year minimum for juvenile uh, offenders. Uh, you know, people are getting life sentences for nonviolent crimes. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of issues. Um, right. And, and, uh, and in every regard, right. They, one of the things that, uh, the supporters of the strikers are asking for is the repeal of the Habitual Felony Offender Act, which is contributing to uh, what you just talked about as far as the creating a, a, a draconian and inhumane sentencing that leads to 
the prison population being overcrowded. But let's talk about uh, some of the things that the Justice Department found. And more importantly, this report, the Justice Department filed a suit. Uh, it, the court has already ruled that ain't nothing going to take place, nothing is going to take place in regard to the suit until 2024, where they'll have a trial on the issues. Now, mind you, we're talking about the Justice Department has cited these conditions that, that exist, uh, violence. Alabama had one of the most violent prisons in prison system in the country. Uh, I think they say like 30% of every 100, uh, 100,000 prisoners are killed in Alabama prisons. That means that everybody in the, in the maximum and medium security prison in Alabama, when they go in these systems, they expect some sort of violence to take place. The uh, Justice Department cited uh, in the women's prison, cited that 30% of the women in the medium and maximum security prisons are molested by the officers, uh, that the, the prisons are overcrowded. This, now, this is the Justice Department study that they came out and said this and sued in this regard. So why is it that we're at the stage right now where the prison population is forced to have a strike in order to get redress or get attention to the problem when it's already been noted. Why are we having this intransigent attitude from the state towards remedying these problems? Well, you have uh, Governor K. Ivey and uh, Alabama Republicans who are in power who are either dis have been dismissive of the, the issues within their prison systems. They've denied uh, and disputed claims from the Department of Justice. And th this goes back to, I mean, this was the Department of Justice under the Trump administration. That exactly, exactly. Out. So, uh, I mean, and these are human rights violations. So right. um, there's really been no swift actions being taken to, uh, address these problems and, uh, you know, with these parole um, denials and these harsh sentencing laws, overcrowding is getting worse um, and, and that fuels, you know, violence and it, it's not just prisoner on prisoner. Uh, it, the, there's a, a video um, out today that was released of prison guards just uh, assaulting uh, a prisoner, you know, ridiculously. It's, uh, you know, just a warning if you do go on social media and look for it or watching it, it's pretty brutal. And um, a, a prisoner did was reported to have died in Alabama prisons mm -hmm. today. Um, you know, they were tied up uh, and, and found uh, assaulted. So um, you have a lot of these vast issues within the, the prison system, and it's just um, you know, un untenable, and th they keep kicking the can down the road and saying it's going to be addressed in a few years, but these human rights violations are occurring now, and the they're harming people now. Um, it it's not just those in prison, it's, you know, people who are, uh, their families who are, you know, are concerned for the well-being and safety and want their family members to, you know, be released, um, or, you know, at least you know, pr protected and adequately provided for. And that's just not being the case. Um, you know, there's been some meals, especially recently, of what they're served. And it's basically inedible. Um, you know, they get a couple pieces of bread and uh, some peanut butter. Uh, some, you know, prisoners didn't even get any lunch yesterday. And, you know, these are just ongoing violating human rights violations. And, and they need, I think there needs to be uh, a lot a swifter action taken from the federal government to, to right, right. move in. That, and that, that's really uh, what I'm, what I'm kind of taken back by uh, is that when you have the, the federal government comes in and cite human rights violation and Eighth Amendment violation and then file litigation on behalf of the uh, plaintiffs, it stands to reason that it, this is more like a knee-jerk reaction than being more assertive because you have the authority and the power to be more forceful. You have the authority and the power 
to uh, have a more concrete action take place. But let's talk about some of the, uh, it's, it's 13 prisons, major prisons in the state of Alabama. Not These are all max and medium security prison. And they're talking about, and the, the major prison that they was talking about is home and correction facility. And home and correction facility is in Escambia and a county of Alabama. And that's the one prison that they're talking about building uh, another facility in this county. Talk about how these prisons in general are being utilized to uh, be the inf create the infrastructure for the economy for these rural counties. These rural counties uh, are it's kind of, they're placed in these these areas where you know they're not seen by you know the majority of the the population and these small towns rely on these prisons economically for you know jobs so they're really you know there's economic incentives to uh, maintain and grow uh, the mass incarceration system in the U.S. because you have rural areas that. Um, have experienced declines in, in job loss, are, are dealing with, uh, you know, economic issues and, uh, you know, rural poverty. Uh, and these prisons are always kind of sold and brought and um, idolized by, you know, local politicians in these areas and local governments and just the, the local communities. They're not seen as uh, you know, they don't address the, the prisoners for the, the people they are and the, the, the impacts on them and their families and their communities. They're really, it's seen as just an, an economic engine, um, you know, for this mass incarceration system. Um, and th those new buildings are, are being built, uh, you know, not only in regards to the human rights violations, but because the, the current prisons are just, the infrastructure is so bad that you know, the, they can't renovate them, that it's not even possible. So they have to develop entirely new buildings. But you know, in, in the meantime, um, these poor, this poor infrastructure, this inadequate infrastructure, this overcrowding is being used and admitting uh, prisoners in Alabama right now are subjected to that, are having to be being forced in that environment, uh, you know, under, you know, really bad conditions. Uh, in, you know, we've seen it over the years, every summer, uh, you know, the lack of air conditioning, the lack of inadequate ed edible food. I, you know, I've heard that from every time I've spoken with um, someone who's done time in Alabama. That's a huge huge issue um you know alabama has uh it relies on prison labor to keep these prison services running um and, and local communities depend on that prison labor too I, I had an article come out in the guardian um today i kind of want to talk about alabama and uh, a few other states in november they are, it's on the ballot, they have a ballot initiative to end the exception to the 13th Amendment of the, con or these um, ballot initiatives are focusing on state constitutions. So mm -hmm. uh, our US constitution has that exception to slavery. Uh, you know, slavery is abolished except uh, for those in prison. Uh, and right. state constitutions have adopted that. Um, and, you know, there's local movements in a lot of states right now uh, three have already uh, removed this exception clause. Um, I've Rhode Island, Utah, and um, I can't remember, call it the third one right now, but mm -hmm. Alabama is one of these states that uh, in November voters will decide on whether to keep or get rid of that clause. Um, and, and, you know, the strike right now that's going on that has to do with, with those jobs. Um, you know, these, you know, workers are getting paid to work, you know, maintenance and, and kitchen and food service jobs that, you know, outside in the normal world, you'd be getting, you know, uh, minimum wage at least, minimum wage at least. Um, and, you know, it, they'll, they're lucky if they're getting any income at all from, from working in, in these jobs that, 
you know, they're not getting the same protections, breaks or things like that. They don't have any agency over when you're working in these jobs. Um, and, you know, they're, they're, these prisons run on their labor. So they're withholding that labor to have to put pressure on Alabama's politicians to address all uh, these widespread issues throughout the system that the Department of Justice and um, civil rights groups and criminal justice reform groups have been, you know, calling out and pushing and pressuring for for action. And, uh, you know, the leaders in Alabama have been dragging their feet or refusing to uh, address, or address or even acknowledge uh, the, the huge problems within, you know, this prison system. And I, you know what, and I was listening to some of the interviews that was being offered by uh, the Alabama uh, governor, uh, Governor Kay, I think her name is, and she responded by saying that uh, she's not going to release, and then she went to the people that, that have been found guilty of committing what might be considered some of the most horrendous crimes. So she goes to the playbook. This is the playbook for creating hysteria. We're not going to release robbers, murderers, rapists, uh, child molesters, and back in society. But uh, from what I'm gathering, the issues that the, the prisoners and their families are talking about are uh, treating people like human, human beings. And I think uh, for our listeners and our viewers, we want to emphasize this point right here, that according to law, your sentence is your punishment. What you're sentenced to is your punishment. From that point on, from that point on, when you in, enter into a correctional facility or institution, from that point on, you're starting to be reformed and changed so that you can ultimately return back to society. But as far as Alabama prison system is concerned, and the governor and everyone in, in, is in cahoots with this, that the more violent the prisons are, the more atrocious the conditions are, the better it is for them in terms of building more prisons, monetizing the labor of prisoners, and using these, using these industrial complex in Alabama to create an infrastructure for the survival of like little small rural counties in, in rural Alabama. But talk about uh, some of the things going on with the, uh, the prisoners and some of, some of the things going on with them in terms of your overview of what's going on with them prior to and at this juncture right now. Okay. Well, um, you know, the, the prison strike is still going on today. That started yesterday. Um, th there hasn't been, uh, a, you know, it's indefinite. So I, I believe it's still going to continue until, you know, so at least some of their demands uh, are met and there, there really hasn't been, doesn't seem to have been, um, like you said, from, from the governor, they're kind of d dismissing um, the, the, these demands and, and the calls and the issues that uh, they're, they're dressing out. And, and that tends to happen, you know, in, in when strikes occur, they're a last resort, uh, you know, withholding their labor, that, that's a, a, it's a tactic. It's a difficult thing for any worker to do, uh, you know, especially in, in prison because, you know, they are ex reporting and experiencing retaliation, whether that's um, not getting any meals or just getting, you know, even worse inadequate meals compared to, you know what what they're used to because right now you have the correctional officers doing the, the work of the kitchen so that's why we've been seeing just you know a couple slices of bread and a carton you know a little pint of milk and a little peanut butter as a, a meal which is you know really uh inadequate and disgusting and kind of just you know another example in the the numerous examples of human rights violations within these prisons um and it's it's difficult because you know the the families when these conditions you know uh, because of you know the retaliation that they're um possibly subjecting themselves from correctional officers and from the prison, um, 
you know, it, it, it's really up to the people in charge of the prison, um, their kind of access to the, the public in terms of, you know, speaking out to, so I'm still trying to get in touch uh, with with family members and organizers that are leading this out. So you have um, family members and, and organizers leading rallies and protests in conjunction with the strike to, to kind of, you know, make sure the public is aware of what's going on. And they're posting, um, you know, cell phone videos that have, are being taken secretly because, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're not supposed to have cell phones and they're not supposed to, you know, they can get in a lot of trouble. They can get assaulted and wind up in solitary confinement uh, if, if they're caught doing this. So, you know, they're taking enormous risks, these prisoners, to not only go out on strike, but to continue on with the strike despite the, the internal pressures from, you know, the cr abuse of correctional officers uh, and, and the, the system in general to, to raise awareness of, of these issues. Uh, and, and like you said, with, with the governor and all, a lot of Republican elected officials, a lot of police, they really go to the vilifying and over generalizing, kind of portraying, um, you know, there, uh, that these are monsters, that these are violent, you know, criminals when, you know, you look at the, the data that, that most of the people with, within prisons do not fit um, the characterizations, uh, the, you know, racist, often racist generalizations and the fear mongering that mm -hmm. uh, the, these uh, elected officials and all these, you know, police um, kind of go out to do it. And it's not just in Alabama. They do that all over the country. We, we've seen it in, you know, their right. cities. They, you know, the um, conservatives are trying to make it seem like there's their lawless um, areas. And, and it, some of the things that these um, people have said and claimed are just outright just ridiculous. There's no substance or truth behind them. But, uh, you know, that's what the communities pu pushing for reform and changes are, are up against is you know the, the, these systems that are are meant to perpetuate and instill fear in the public to undermine any efforts for change right and i think that uh when we when we do an overview of the alabama prison system uh it epitomized the, the prison industrial complex and the 13th amendment in regard to slavery Talk about the uh, what's going on with the families. I know they probably, I know they suspended visits, uh, but talk about how to if you got any read on how the fam what the families are, how the families are feeling, or where the families stand because we know that their loved ones are being subjected even right now to some cruel and unusual uh, punishment as a result of the strike. We know they're gonna try to break the strike. I was in an environment where. We was on lockdown for uh, nine months, and for the nine nine months, they gave us a bag. They gave us one cereal, uh, two pieces of bread, milk, and a fruit in the morning. They gave us bologna and cheese for lunch, some kind of fruit, and then dinner they gave us some kind of cold meat, and they did this for like nine months straight. Talk about the families. Have you been able to get, I know you say you try and get in contact with them. Have you been able to get in contact with the supporters that's, uh, or anybody that can give us a read on where the families are and, and what we can do to like help this, uh, you know, what the viewers of Rattling the Bars can do to help uh, bring attention to this horrendous uh, problem that's taking place in the Deep South. So in regards to the families, um, there's been some comments out in local press in Alabama. Uh, the families are obviously you know, concerned, but very supportive of, of the strike and have been participating in, in protests and, and rallies uh, in, in support of the demands and you know, really backing uh, their demands uh, in, in addressing the current conditions in the pr prisons and the you know, various... Uh, harsh sentencing 
uh, and you know denial of, of parole for for those in Alabama prisons. So. Um, one of the organizations leading this strike is called the, the Free Alabama Movement. Uh, they've been posting on Twitter, uh, on social media. Um, so, it, you know, if you go on there, uh, you can watch some of the videos that are, are coming out, some of the latest developments of the strike, um, you know, some of the latest news. Uh, and, you know, kind of, you know, get, you can get involved with that. You can share, uh, and, and just kind of keep raising a, awareness. Cause I, you know, I think on, on the outside, what this organization is trying to do is to get the public uh, aware of what's happening in the prisons as much as possible to, um, enable this strike to have, uh, as much pressure on elected officials. Uh, and as much awareness uh, on the problem and, you know, if, if you know, and basically embarrass uh, Alabama Republicans into actually taking action because uh, they've had plenty of time. They've had years now to, you know, they're fully aware of the problems um, and, you know, nothing's being done. And uh, the only in, from the federal government, like you said, you know, they're, it's going to take years for the courts to, to intervene. So, um, you know, the, the, these people don't have that kind of time to continue enduring, the, you know, what they've been, what they're being forced to do, deal with on a daily basis. There you have it. The real news about Sweet Home Alabama, That's the Deep South, the home of the Confederacy, slavery in its purest form, in the form of Alabama correction system. We know now that uh, the state of Alabama and the governor and everyone that's behind this horrendous treatment of people, we recognize that 300 people have been killed uh, every 300,000 out of 100,000, that the women are being molested, and everything the governor is saying about the people in there, her staff is inflicting this kind of hard, cruel treatment on people. Mike, you got the last word on this. So the Free Alabama Movement is one of the organizations that are kind of leading the, the strike on the outside in terms of sharing uh, videos from those on the inside and, and kind of uh, giving the, the public any updates in terms of, you know, what's going on and, and how um, they're being responded to. So, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's really important to continue to, you know, share those videos, support them, follow the, the, the strike and support, you know, media outlets that are actually paying attention to it because it's, you know, it's not something that, uh, mainstream media outlets like CNN, Fox News, they're never going to mention this. Um, d despite, you know, when you have similar conditions or similar issues in countries like China or, you know, Russia or anything like that, you know, th there's a lot more attention brought to those issues. Uh, but what human rights violations are, you know, occurring in our own backyard and something as, um, you know, rare and, you know, just the, the issues behind it, behind this strike, uh, you know, like I said, it's not just like a strike on the outside. Uh, these people are really putting, you know, the, the, I don't think it's, um, you know, th their lives on the line to, mm -hmm. to kind of call, uh, attention to um the issues they're facing and uh, the abuses within the system so uh you know i think it's really important i implore the, the public to continue educating themselves about these issues and continue you know it, it's not going to be a, a story that's going to be kept um you know being put in front of you like um uh, you know, things in the, the mainstream media. It's not, it's not the, the queen's funeral. It's not going to get that kind of attention. So it really uh, comes down to individuals uh, participating and um, getting involved and in educating themselves and educating others and 
um, getting involved with the, the activism and, and pushing for these changes and pushing back on the, the fear mongering and the dismissals and just the, the silence from um, those with powerful platforms and those who have the power to actually take actions to, to resolve these demands. There you have it, the real news. We need to keep us going, keep an eye on what's going on in Alabama. We need to be aware of what's being done to people. These are human beings that are being subjected to the cruel and the unusual punishment whose life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness is always at jeopardized. We want to encourage all the real news listeners and all the rallying the bar viewers to Educate yourself on what's going on in Alabama and take a stand on what's going on in Alabama. Whether you agree with uh, the strike or not, you should agree with that human beings should be treated as human beings. Thank you, Mike, for uh, this enlightening conversation and this interview, and, and we uh, look forward to your follow-up on this. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Monta. And we, I encourage everyone to continue to support the real news this is not the alternative. This is not an alternative to the news. So this is actually the news being given to you real. You will never hear nothing about Alabama prison system or your major networks that might outline. You'll never hear nothing about what's going on within the general society at large. You only hear these things on the real news. And you more importantly, you'll hear these things on Rattling the Bars. Thank you very much. On behalf of Eddie Conway, have a great day.